Uh, thank you, Professor Mabola. I'm here to speak today in, in the context of global migration, which is the purpose of this uh, session. I'm here to speak about a relatively small component, but an important component, which is refugees and asylum seekers. I would say I'm also uh, quite pleased to be able to speak today because uh, 2011 is the 60th year anniversary of the 1951 Convention on Refugees. This convention was established in the aftermath of World War II, of course, because of the degree and massive displacement in Europe, and also Israel was the founding signatory of this convention. The organization for which I work, uh, the United Nations High Commission for Refugees, which is based in Switzerland, not American, by the way, uh, is, uh, uh, was created in the context of this convention. HR was created to oversee state implementation of this convention, and also to help states seek solutions for refugees. This was 60 years ago. Uh, it was foreseen at that time that the NHR would exist for one year. One year. The, the, the convention said the NHR will exist for one year. After that, the issue of refugees will be resolved in the world. Okay. This is 60 years later. And I would say that over these 60 years, the, 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 the premises of displacement for refugees have become far more complex than before. I mean, to give you an example, that during the Cold War, much of the, the refugees that were being generated during the Cold War were because of the Cold War. If you had a person from the Soviet bloc, or Czechoslovakia, or Hungary, that appeared in Canada or US, they were de facto considered refugees because of the regime they came from and for ideological considerations, which was easy, it was quite straightforward. Now, it's a bit more complicated. I would say also at the time of the 1951 convention, the, the very much the bulk of the refugees were concentrated in Europe. This was because of the devastation of the, of the, of the Second World War. But now, 80% of the 43 million people that are displaced by conflict in the world are, are hosted in developing countries, countries which have the least capacity to deal with these people, yet they held 80%. And as Professor Moisey said, as an example, there's been much press coverage, as you've probably seen, about people fleeing North Africa since the beginning of the Arab Spring to Italy. It's created problems for the European Union, it's created a lot of media interest. 40,000 people, you make sure estimates, have fled to Italy from North Africa. So 40,000 people, it's a significant number. But 40,000 people is 2% of the estimated 1 million people that have been displaced by conflict in Libya, primarily through Egypt and Tunisia. So it's a significant number, but we have to keep proportion on that issue. I would, I would say, say this also, the, the, the movement to Italy, Italy, though, I would say, say which is not new, I would, I would say, say it highlights one of the more uh, difficult issues with asylum today. That is the issues of mixed migration, where you have populations that are moving together with different reasons. You have people that are using human smugglers to go to Greece, some are going to work, some are seeking asylum. This is a major challenge for states, all industrial states these days to determine who among these groups of mixed migrants coming to their country are refugees deserving of international protection or are economic migrants which the state has every right to deport. This is a huge challenge for not only Canada, not only America, not only Italy, but, but also Israel. I would say, and now turning to Israel, I would say this influx that has been referred to of these primarily Africans crossing the border from Sinai, uh, Israel's initial response to this was best characterized by me in a meeting I attended in the Knesset early in the year when the, uh, the issue of the need for immigration law in Israel was being discussed. And at that time, uh, the, a very senior minister of justice official said, yes, we, have, we know now we need tools to deal with this issue, but you have to understand, who would have ever thought seven years ago people would want to come to Israel? This is a senior official in the Minister of Justice, so this understands the thought process. So, so, with, with this, this being said, Israel has joined the club. Israel has joined the club of countries that are destination countries for mixed migration flows. Because of Israel's man border with Africa, because of Israel's wealth, because of their quality of life, because of, I would say, the general welcome way. There's difficulties, of course, but people are basically welcomed here, which is demonstrated by the, the video that you saw. So Israel has become a destination country for mixed migration flows, and this will continue. You know, I've been doing this job for 20 years in many countries of the world. Sometimes it seems like 100, but it's been 20. And I would 
that Israel is quite unique in that we have a population here that has a deep sense of empathy and connection with the refugees today. Deep sense. And the government is well aware of this. And this guides the government policy when they've admitted the government is very well aware of this. I would say, but on the other hand, you have people who genuinely believe that this influx of Africans, non-Jewish, from uh, Africa, is a threat to the very delicate de demographic balance in Israel. People believe this. You also have government that is cognizant of the fact that these refugees congregate in certain areas, South Tel Aviv, Arad, Arad, mostly in the poor communities, and this creates very social problems and potential problems. These things are in conflict. These two ideas are in conflict. I would say also Israel is quite uh, unique in that there's a great sense of pride that I come across in Israel. We received millions of Jewish refugees and immigrants. We've integrated them. Uh, and you can see the examples everywhere. You can see the examples of the diversity of Israel, which I had no idea until I came here. A great sense of pride that I received all these refugees and integrated them. But this influx that happened at the beginning of a few years ago, which is now totaling about 35,000 primarily Eritrean citizens, uh, the country also realized that at that time they were ill-equipped to deal with non-Jewish refugees in Israel. So this is what I, in my discussion with the government here, what we're advocating for and what they're realizing now is that they have to develop appropriate tools, legislative and otherwise, for determining who is a refugee, who is not a refugee, how will they be treated, how will they be housed, how will they be given protection, even temporary protection across the time until we go back home. This is the big challenge for Israel today, because this issue is here, it's not going away. 